Whoa. I'm Look, excited, bro. The Maestro's first drive. Oh my god, okay, so first, second, third, fourth, fifth, that's sixth. Okay, reverse is like way the hell out there. I've never used one of these before. All right, everyone gets at least one stall, all right? So don't, don't fucking right, judge right. me or anything. But... Oh! oh man, I'm a fucking pro. Filming a video, kids. What the? Just to uh, there's hey. my one. Yep, yep. When it starts, right uh, when it starts over, make sure uh, make sure you get up to like 50, cause uh, the ABS is funky. guys how you all doing this has been a long long time coming almost a year to be able to make this happen but in reality it's because this is like version 2.0 of the same thing just actually getting done and that is kicking it with shades wade right here and we're going to look at his sick dc5 type r basically basically type r it's one of the cleanest ones honestly i'm not going to lie a lot of heart and a lot of passion went into this. I'm not gonna lie. It's all 
dark. I turn my light. Yo, check this shit out, guys. Dude, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Just stand right over here. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah, dude. How long have you had it? About a year now. Since yeah? Since the flood. Since the flood. We were, and you guys don't know, we were meeting up last year. This guy comes to Maryland once a year from California. Long truck. And uh, we had some issues with the car last time. I had coil pack issues. The car was running on like three cylinders, bucking, cutting off on me, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I had to pull off. And the place where I pulled off during this torrential rainstorm was Ellicott City. And any of you guys, my subscribers and stuff, you guys know, I lost the car in a flood. I, I literally had to swim out of my silver DC-5. Oh, it's terrible, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so basically the only way to bounce back from that was to go hard on this one, you know? like. Not even three months later, I found this in uh, Virginia Beach, 4200 bucks. Sold the engine, the transmission, the interior out of it, made my money back. So I basically got this car for free, broke even, and then proceeded to just take everything out I could. Take a 10K loan out, take my 4200 I made back. Oh my God, and, uh, dude. Just basically tight bar the fuck out of this car. Yeah, so, that's... That's yeah. sick. I know you got a bunch of stuff on the inside too, so let's uh I guess let's just start let's start with the inside, man, because like that's just the dopest part. Guys, guys, check this out, right? We got the the spoon wheel here. We got the K-Tune all aluminum shifter, but I think the biggest takeaway is the all red interior literally everywhere. And uh, this is sick. Even even the back seats here. Yeah, those are custom. Uh, I, funny story is I ended up working for the people that made these seats. Yeah. Uh, it's a place called Ray's Upholstery in Richmond. But uh, yeah, their upholstery work's not cheap. It was one of the things that I was hesitating on because it was just so pricey. Yeah. Those seats and the carpet was like fifteen hundred dollars. Oh my god. Like literally. And the funny thing is those back seats. The, it's the same insert material. So when you look at this Recaro insert on the backing and the, the seat, yeah, that is Recaro OOS, like OEM NOS material. If you look at the back seats, that's the exact same material. Now you're probably wondering where the hell did I get that from? I got it from Australia. Oh, There's crazy! These, these upholstery experts called uh, Retro Auto Tech, and I think they're in New South Wales. Okay. Super expensive. Five meters was like, with shipping was like five hundred dollars basically. Oh my god! But it, this is the crazy part. It's the last five meters you could find anywhere. <laughs> they they said they're not getting any more. They have the blue, they have the black, they have like yellow Alcantara for like BMWs and Porsches and like exotic cars. But yeah. That red material. They said they're not getting any more of it. And they don't, they said you're not going to be able to find it anywhere else. Damn. So dude. I had to I had to strike while the iron's hot. You know yeah, what I mean? Dude. I was yeah. like, I want all of it to match. You have to, dude. I use the same material uh, door panel, door cards, and the uh, little pocket right there. It's the same material. Dude, that's so sick. Same thing with the headliner and all that. Oh yeah, guys, you gotta hear. It. Let's let's undo the headliner from the other side. Yeah. Yeah, guys, you got probably better lighting here. You can definitely check out the inside here a lot better. A, but yeah, we got this guy right here, DC5 Recaros. This guy has custom mats. How sick is that? And then we get the headliner all the way to the back. I'll give you another shot. Of the all red back seats. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. I think one of the, the silliest, most fun Easter eggs. You're probably like, oh man, Easter egg, what's what's hidden? What do you have? What JDM part do you have? All this red interior wouldn't be complete without a uh, 
without a red USB cable going to K-Pro. You know, you've gone, That's, you know, <laughs> you've gone red. You all got the way. red all the way out. You might as well, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's actually really hard to find a red yeah, USB cable. I'm, I'm sure. Actually, <laughs> with a 90 too to put on the back of K-Pro, so you don't have to unplug it. I, just, oh. I put a little cap on the end of it, so it's never gonna like short out or ground out That's or do any smart. weird stuff. Hell yeah, dude. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much the interior. Uh, not too much else, you know, stereo, the little center console mod, uh, Type R hazard switch. Uh, I think the only things Type R we're missing is uh, the start stop button and the power folding mirrors. That's that's the only Type R things I have left. Yeah. I'm like going right hand drive, but the reason I didn't go right hand drive with this, it's not that I couldn't or I didn't want to to a degree. But I want to reserve that for a real one. You know okay. what I mean? Like, yeah, that makes sense. So, like, let's say I take this to Honda Day and I made it right-hand drive. A lot of people said I would have I would have won third, second, or first best place right. RSX if I would have been right-hand drive. They would have thought it was a real one. But I don't I don't believe that. Like, I think I've seen real ones at Honda Day. I've seen a championship white one. And people know because when you pop the hood, you can check in the inside of the engine bay where the firewall's cut and all that stuff yeah so unless you cut the firewall and you do it like i'm talking like a factory basically right like, it's really hard to fool people you know what i mean but i'm left-handed too so like there's not much of a win <laughs> with going right hand drive i basically have to relearn the car and the shifting right. and muscle memory and all that stuff so that's hilarious dude but yeah i don't know i just thought keep a left hand drive you learn how to drive a car for 15 years 16 years like getting now to the point where I think I've been driving for about 17 years, and it's always been on left-hand drive. Right. I've only driven like one right-hand drive car in my in my time on this earth. That's awesome. So That's the awesome. learning curve, like I just feel like I wouldn't be as uh, smooth of a driver on right-hand drive. I'd have to relearn it all over. Yeah, again, I think that know? would be for a lot of people too. And the roads here aren't set up for it, you know. Yeah. Like corner pocket left turns and stuff, like you, you can't really fake that, you know. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be harder on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not, you know, I could import a real one or an EK9 B16B. Like, that'd be the dream. <laughs> that'd be the dream for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, most people don't know that obviously when his car got in the flood, everything had to be changed out. So when he bought this car, um, he had to do something with the heart of the motor or the heart of the, the heart of the car, rather. And he didn't really want to drive the type s for another like 14 years that he owned his last dc5 so the man went for a complete upgrade so man let's check this out let's check this out Nothing too crazy, you know. <laughs> but it, honestly, it's it's fun and reliable. That's what it comes down to, you know. A lot of guys, almost everybody nowadays, is getting turbos. Yeah, 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 awesome. for sure. I mean, I know you've you've said to me about a million times. When's the turbo coming? When's the turbo, bro? My tech, dude, coming over. I'm gonna fix the, you know, work on the car, or something fixed or install a new part. He's like, you bring in the turbo, right? <laughs> so, it's almost kind of like a running inside joke, you know, everyone's like, dude, turbo this shit. Yeah. And my buddy in Australia, um, he has a DC-5 that has a, a Magnus and supercharger on it, making roughly 400 horsepower to the wheels on 14 pounds of boost, which is really good power from a supercharger. I mean, Merc Racing and Magnuson, they're, they're at the front of the game of the supercharger. It'll make you forget about Comtech, it'll make you forget about jackson racing and all that stuff you know yeah they're they're legit but uh me personally i'm kind of more satisfied with the all motor route um i think this right here the groupium and the skunk 2 is not gonna last i think we're going kinsler okay I think we're going big boy itb yeah, yeah yeah before before we uh get into the future here let's let's dive into what you have already because you've got some pretty unique stuff um, that you had to actually like modify to even get. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, the heart of it, obviously, DC5 Type R, K20A, 11.5 to 1 compression. They say it's good for like 220 ish, you know, horsepower at the flywheel. Right. So then, bolt on wise, you got the Groupium Ram Air, 
uh, intake system. I this is actually made for a right-hand drive car, so right. this right here, this duct, you're actually going to replace the whole windshield cowling. They provide a, a cowling piece, but the unfortunate part is, if you're left-hand drive, you have to modify this. Like if you look right here, all up in here, right? I had to cut all this out to fit this because the right-hand drive piece for a right-hand drive car, right? It's molded fiberglass, so it replaces this whole panel from like here to here. That's awesome. So. Look at this, guys. This is just this giant oh, yeah, air that's... pocket Group M intake we have right here. Yeah, that's nice, that's though. That's dope. They did a really good job on the carbon, too. I kind of feel bad that uh, I need to put some type of, like, foam right here or something because it's actually the carbon's getting uh, rubbed on the hood a little bit. Okay. So you live and you learn, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. You're DIY, and, you know, you're going to have stuff like that, but it's not really hurting anything. I'll be able to buff it out, that's let's awesome. sand it or something. What else do we got over here? So you got the uh, Skunk 2 Pro Series uh, manifold, 74 millimeter uh, Skunk 2 throttle body, port matched, so get a little bit more flow. Yeah. Uh, you know, got Koyo Rad, got uh, Mishimoto radiator hoses, Teguan intake arm. In the back, you got the, uh, yeah, the uh, Skunk 2 race header. Now you got the Skunk 2. Yeah, there you go. That's honestly like people, people will debate on like exhaust systems or what intake to run. It's all about the race header. That's where you're gonna free up the most power, honestly. Right. It really don't matter. I mean, to a degree, it matters. Like with this, it's feeding more cold air. So whatever's gonna give you the most cold air is gonna be the best intake, you know. But uh, the race header is really where you pick up the most power. You know, it's, you're deleting the cat, especially like. Uh, you look in the back of the car. This is this is my favorite piece ever. Veil side titanium teardrop exhaust. This is sick, guys. Let's get. Uh, let me maybe I can get you guys underneath here. You guys can check out this little look at this veil side titanium veil exhaust side. ride. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Can we get that? Yep. But yeah, this thing weighs like five pounds. This from the axle back weighs five pounds. It's full titanium. It's, it's pretty much one of the best, I mean, I guess for the lack of a better term, you call it a muffler. It's from the axle back, so it's the muffler. Right, right. But um, when you hold it in your hand, you're like, man, this is like some NASA shit or something. You know what I mean? It's like space age technology or something. Yeah, it's dude. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, that's That awesome. actually came from, uh, if any of you guys know me, you probably know Emerald Tuning or Broke That Garage or uh, Dead Spirits DC. Dead Spirits. He's a uh, shout out to Lachlan, bro. Lachlan's a YouTuber out and uh, he's out in Phoenix or no yeah. Tucson. Tucson, yeah. Yeah, out in Arizona. He the way I found him was uh, he had a DC5. I used to watch his videos before I even made content. This is like two years ago, and I loved his videos. I liked his personality. He's a funny guy. Always, always built a clean car. It doesn't matter what it was. If it was the DC5, his recent dc2r um he just parted ways with but um you know family you know he's a family man so yeah. I, to me it was crazy when he got rid of it but i was just like dude i understand man you're we're on different paths you know yeah, i'm a exactly. single guy i don't got no kids <laughs> <laughs> i ain't got no kids but um yeah so the short long story short with that he had that thing up on his wall in his garage after he got rid of his dc5 i pestered this guy <laughs> for months on end and like you and I had an inside running joke about it like I bought it from him you were like yeah so just uh I'm gonna forward it from your address yeah. to my address yeah. I'm gonna get that do that bail I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, address the change and have that sent to me right, don't worry right. about it bro I got you right but yeah he was super cool with it I got that bail side for like 270 bucks shipped damn Dude, you can't deal. you can't find it let alone you know you, what I'm saying you could get on you could get on crew up garage you could get on nin gun you can get on any Japanese JDM site can't find it they don't make it anymore that's there's like none of them floating around but yeah that's, that's awesome that's pretty much the bulk one set up uh, got has ports you got a uh, m m Honda suspension parts front strut rear strut and uh, seat pillar bars, super nice pieces. Those came, uh, I got those brand new from uh, Right Hand Drive Japan. Okay. Com. Yeah. Super, I mean, you gotta wait a little while, but like shipping wise and 
customer service wise, I mean, you got to think these people speak a different language, they're on a different part of the, the world. So, like, had no troubles with it whatsoever. Pay the money, two weeks later it shows up at your door, it's not harmed, coming through customs or anything. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's take another look in here. The sick little catch can you got going here. Really yeah. like the vibrant lines you got. Yeah. It was it was a learning experience trying to make those. I've never made any lines before, but you know, you buy the little uh I think it's a cool tool or whatever, the little yeah. penny maker. Yeah, all that little stuff. little claws. This is dope, dude. You got the uh, the M and M oil cap there. Yeah, like anybody wondering like what the hell is the theme of this, like you probably think blue car, yellow valve cover, spoon. It's like half spoon, and then it's like half M and M Honda. If you look at their colors, you got anodized blue and red. Right. And then when I bought these Summit Racing AN fittings, at first I hated them. I was like, oh man, blue and red. That's so weird. I want them all blue. Yeah. I was just on the spoon mentality, right? Yeah. But uh, as soon as I put them on there, I was like, oh, I was like, it's like a, it's like a half and half. You got blue and red, like. You know, the JDM emblems are all red, and Japan Honda dealership logos are red instead of blue, and stuff like that. So I was like, no, nah. I was like, this this fits really nice. This yeah. fits super nice, dude. I love it. Kept it all within scheme. Are these uh, OEM injectors? Uh, no, these are, uh, uh, what are they, Graham 750 cc's. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. And then, uh, uh, Graham's 310 pump. Okay. It's not tuned yet, it's scaled, but you know, it's about all you can do until you get to a tuner. I was trying to hit up, uh, see, I'll give you guys a sneak trailer preview of what a video coming up is going to be. <laughs> We've been talking about how cool it would be. So the tuner in my town is Matt Shu. Some of you guys have probably seen him like on like, you know, other YouTubers. Not, not a whole lot of YouTubers, but I know I've seen him on Trey V. Dippin. I've seen him like, you know, pop up here and there. People will get in a tune-in session with him by appointment. Yeah. But he's backed up like six months. Oh, wow. So it's really hard to get in touch with him because he does it as a secondary job. He has a, he's a mechanical engineer in the day. Then from like nighttime to like five in the morning, he's a tuner basically. Yeah. And he's really good at it too. He's one of the best in our area. But uh, I want to take this car across country to the best. I want to go up to Evans, Jeff Evans tuning up in Pennsylvania. Oh, shit. I want to go up to Humble and meet the guys, Kenny yeah. and all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the creme de la creme. I want to go to PFI. I want to, I want to kick it with Brent, <laughs> Kyle, and Sean and all them. Yeah, and yeah. Basically, we're going to have some trickery. We'll go to Jeff Evans first up in Pennsylvania. We'll get him to tune the car, see what it makes. Then we'll drive to Humble. Humble's the next spot from Virginia. Um, We'll take Jeff Evans' tune off there so it's like it never happened, but we'll save it, right? Yeah. We'll save it, we'll, we'll have it on a, a zip drive or something, we'll get them to tune it, then we'll go to PFI and we'll do the same thing. Humble's tune will not be on there, so there'll be no evidence. So basically what that equates to is no tuner will get any shortcuts from another tuner. <laughs> so we're going to see who makes the most jam with the car. That'd be sick. You know? like. I want to see what one of these is capable of. People say, you know, I've seen RSX's K282 stock, just bolt-ons. They can make about 230 if you have a really good tuner. Brent made 230. Yeah. So if Brent made 230 with that, I'd like to see 240 or 250 out of this. That'd be sick. I, to the I wheels. Know, to the wheels. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Because this comes like a Type S production numbers is 200 at the flywheel this is 217 or 220 ish at the flywheel i think it's got a lot in it because it definitely feels faster than like 225 it really does even like yeah you, no for sure you said when you got in the car earlier that you could definitely feel it's more torquey and like comes on quicker and yeah no for it's sure got a it feels completely band, different than a tight gas motor 100 percent definitely that's awesome like oh, shit man the crazy thing is too like we could take more weight out of it too, like, you know? Yeah. Sound deadening, do some, uh, some long fucking, cut some holes and some stuff. Whatever, <laughs> whatever we gotta do. Whatever we gotta do. You know? That's awesome. Well, shit, man, it's been tight. Hanging out, just uh, taking a look around the car. Absolutely. But yeah, man, I'm super excited. We actually got to make this thing happen. It's been a long time coming and it's actually really no cool to see. No catastrophes. No catastrophes, you know what I'm saying? This one's going to be a good one. We definitely want to get some more shots, drive around, have a little fun. But thanks, man. 
Super appreciate you spending time. Are you excited to out. drive it? I'm excited. I'm super excited to drive it, man. But uh, I already see security rolling up right now, actually. <laughs> so we may actually have to dip, but I'm glad we already got this done. Um, but yeah, guys, so let's check it out. What's coming up next?